Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Ryan, and welcome to the next Blender tutorial where we're going to be dealing with the mortar and we're basically going to be adding in variations into uh, the mortar as we'll see. It's going to make it more realistic because at the end of the day, like, uh, whenever you create anything, it's not perfect. There will always be variations in between and that imperfection is what makes it perfect. Ha. And then also we're going to add in a uh, an added node just so that when we because obviously we're doing the tutorial now and we're setting the size of the motor and the tile and so that's how we create but maybe you're doing it for something else different project you want to scale the tile the motor smaller or bigger that means you've got to do it across both of those group nodes but instead what we're going to do is we're going to set up a way that it works across both of them alike all right so uh, should we get started into Yes, this tutorial. Okay, this is my render. Uh, from last week, it might look a bit different. I've made some 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 adjustments, and that was just to my mortar texture, uh, my smoothness, and my, my mortar size, and then as well as this side, and I changed some of the colors around here. So note, tile color one is like a light color. Tile color two is that uh, blue color that I was sort of going for. All right, and my mortar color, I keep gray. Uh, that just helps that in between mortar size look gray and um, you'll see my, with, with the tile smoothness as well that's what gave that color and you'll see I just rearranged things here so that the colors are together and my scale and, and size are just over there that helps with that okay so let's get into this so first of all uh, what I'm wanting to do is to add in the the variation into um, the mortar size of here because you can see it's really really perfect and if you look at tiles like this they never really are perfect you've got to add in that variation and you can do uh, you can do that just by plugging in um, here into the size uh, something to help you like noise uh, yeah but what we're going to be adding in is basically a uh, musgrave musgrave texture all right, now if I plug that straight into my um, my motor size right here. In fact, uh, before we do that, um, in fact, no, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. No, let's do this. No, really, let's let's do this. You will see how already there are weird, um, strange things going on here. That is our Musgrave. So uh, you can see in this place over here, where it's not like that, in this other area over here, it is. So you'll see over here, um, we've added, it, it's going over the tile size and that. Um, that's, that's just because uh, the size that we want can only be restricted to a specific value. For example, if I go 0 0.01. Let's just let it do its rendering, do it, do a thing here, and you'll see here it, it it sits nicely. Okay, if I go to point one, okay, we allowed to render. I am recording on this machine as well, and as well as doing my cycles render. If you look at my samples here, I'm sitting at five twelve. Even with the viewport, I don't have the, the denoising in it. Um, we actually got a new machine. Uh, this is the iMac 2021, so you'll see the, 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 the cycles rendering is actually quite impressive. This is the new M1 chip um, for any Apple fans or any of those out there that are wondering how the M1 does under Blender. Like I said, I, I'm screen recording right now at full HD um, and I am at the same time busy doing Blender and you can see it, it, it's super impressive, I, I must be honest. I think this thing has got seven, as far as I remember, seven or eight GPUs within the M1 chip as long as well as my um, yes my, <laughs> my CPU I've been able to put this over to GPU um, so it's using the, the actual GPU of the M1 chip so it's beautiful all right so and there you can see basically what our smoothness is doing so which means that what we want to do is um, the the information that I'm getting out of here um, should not sh should be within the range all right and if that rings a bell we go to converter so sorry just to get this menu for those who don't know shift a 
you go to converter and then you will go to the repeat map range which we've used over here and that will allow us to keep whatever information we're putting out uh, between you know within a range now what I mean by that within a range if I plug height into value is that we're giving um, this mortar size between 0 and 1 all right 0 meaning that the mortar the actual mortar size is very small in fact you can see there it's it's basically absolute um, and 1 being the fullest size so you can see putting the the the, the mortar size completely full it completely takes over so what we want to do is we want to get a value between uh, 0 0.01 and uh, 0.1 so that's what we can do with the map range so remember how the map range works from our from our previous tutorial um, we can say from 0 to 1 which is cool but now what is it going to send out it's going to send out so let's plug this into our mortar size and I'm going to say I want my range between uh, 0.01 and to max 0.1 and you'll see now that the variations that we get out of this Musgrave uh, you can see at some parts it's zero as uh, small and at some parts it gets uh, quite a bit bigger right so there now you have your variation which is pretty cool okay so now what we want to do is now that we've actually got our variation what can help us with this as well is if we actually give it a uh, so if I go to input shift a shift a to bring up this menu input and we want to give it a texture coordinate now generated uh, th this will affect those values as well so generated uh, will give us again from 0 to 1 but what's nice is if I use object right just stick with me if you know what I'm talking about it gives us from minus 1 to 0 to 1 so I'm going to plug that in here and the other place that I also want to plug I want to use the same texture that the coordination of this is into my, both of my so if I go from here uh, to my texture to my texture and as well as my tile come on okay I think it's because I'm going too fast uh, over the yes. there you go okay now look at that see I just got a, a lot more tiles can you see the variation in the in-betweens in that pretty cool huh what do you think all right so now we've plugged in our texture coordinates we've uh, used the object um, coordination to to place all of you know all of my textures and my Musgrave texture as well so that they they're all using the same uh, coordination all right so now what we want to do is the second thing is I want to make some adjustments on uh, on my let's see here on my um, yes so like I said um, let's say I want my tiles to be smaller but that means I need to then uh, I, I need to make sure that this is synced up as well what I can do is I can set one one node to control both of them all right shift a and i can use something under my converter as well or is it in the vector or color or inputs yes there it is under input value and this is just a value so i can plug this into my uh, scale and i can use that same value under the scale over here and I can put this again at five. Okay, there you go. See, now they're together quite nicely. Very lacquer, very, very cool, very, very cool. Okay, and I can even name this. So I can actually name this brick scale. Okay, that's nice. All right, we didn't rename it. I think that's because I was supposed to call it here. Yeah. I don't know what it did if I named it there. There you go, brick scale. I changed something else. Somewhere something is like confused. But anyway, there you go. We've got our nice uh, variation. Right. And again, I've made it five because that's what we had it. Now what uh, what what happens there is that because I've got my mortar texture and my tile texture plugged in, they're both lining up quite nicely together. 
right the the other thing that I would really like to do is I would just make like to make some some, some final adjustments here on my Musgrave texture so um, my scale I'm gonna leave at five my detail I'm gonna put this up and you're gonna see what it's going to do I'm gonna put this up to uh, 4.6 I'm going to my dimension I'm going to put at zero and this lacunarity lacunarity <laughs> right I'm going to take this up to 3.8 these were just the settings that I found worked quite nicely with this okay and now you can see we've got a random uh, tall tall texture here it's actually quite nice if you want to you can maybe adjust the the smoothness, um, perhaps of the tile. All right. Imagine we bring this down to uh, 0.75. I don't know about you, but I'm just finding those edges to be a little bit too smooth. Or what I can do, I'll tell you what. Uh, here in my principal shader, okay, you go principal shader. Something that can also make this pretty cool is if I change the, uh, let's see, the roughness. I'm going to bring the roughness bit down to 0.105. And you'll see it's going to make the tile, see? It's gonna make uh, my material a bit more uh, shinier. Then I'm going to take my metal up, my metal, to 0.250, okay. So, what we've got here is this um, tile texture. All right, let's just scale out here so we can see a bit more. Let's wait for it to finish render. So that is our tile texture. Um, but the problem that we have here, so the tiles itself is shiny and that's cool, but I actually, I don't want the mortar to be shiny as well. And I guess that's what we're gonna be dealing with. In our next tutorial so um, we've gotten thus far we've we've showed you how to group um, shaders and sort of you can alter them so you can duplicate alter them we've showed you how uh, how you can use the, the map range as well that helps pretty quick I think we have we have a we have an understanding of how values work within uh, the nodes between zero and one and how you can literally use maths and you can mix and match them we've got our tile texture looking pretty cool here and later on you can even um, you can even use this for something and I, I think with what we've acquired well acquired is that the word I've never used such high word acquired with what we've accomplished here uh, I think you'd have an understanding if you want to add a nice text onto the tiles but anyway our next tutorial will be the last one and we're going to take care of the, the glossiness within the mortar. So I'll see you guys next in the next video. Please do me a favor, like this video to support uh, what we're doing here, giving you tutorials, giving you, if you go look at our playlist at all the other videos that we have on this channel, we've got so much more, so much other things, not just um, tutorials. There are other uh, shows and other people and it's, it's huge, it's amazing, you need to go check it out. But like and subscribe to support what we're doing here because you do like this video, don't you? Yes. Thank you. And any questions, guys, comment below. So see you guys in the next video. Cheers.